Hey, what's up folks? Uh, today we are working on the hard body. We've had a lot of requests to uh, for some hard body updates. Well, <laughs> here you go. It's a piece. It's not a piece. No, but let's tell them about some of the problems we're having. Can oh, you see we are having problems. Uh, let me see. Can we see the engine bay real good? No, I think we're okay. I think we can see the engine bay okay. If you want to highlight things, you may need a, a light. Well, I mean, the biggest thing is, I don't know if you can see, like, all this oil Let's everywhere. See. Yes, we can definitely see that oil, because it's a lot of oil. Yeah, there's everywhere. a lot. There's a lot. Go! <laughs> so, one of the problems that we're having, and this is really the only problem that we're having. Actually, there's another one, but it's interesting, and I'll explain that in a second. The dipstick keeps popping out like this. Like, under boost, it goes boop, and then we get this mess. Which is just ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. So, it happened after we put this turbo on. But I don't think it's the turbo. I think it's the way that my wastegate is plumbed. So, this is the wastegate line. The wastegate's down there. And it comes up and over and goes to this T. And this T gets boost reference from after the throttle body. And before, it went from there to this pipe. I had a different pipe here when the piping went down into here. Um, and it had a nipple on it, and that's where it got it. So, from what I understand, and I, I can't prove this, but <laughs> your, your throttle body is a valve, so it's going to regulate pressure by itself. And since I'm getting boost reference after that, it gets really a lot of pressure built up in the charge piping and in the intercooler. Because this goes until after the throttle body gets 5 PSI. So if it's shut... That turbo, the wastegate doesn't say anything. It's like, yeah, build as much boost as you want. Now, granted, the engine's not rotating, so it can't, or it's not it's not building enough exhaust to rotate the turbo. But it, it somehow, I think that's the problem with all this oil. So step one, we're gonna take our our wastegate and we're gonna drill a hole here and tap into nipple, and I have nipple there. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. Um, if not, we'll also, also what we're going to do is we're going to increase our ventilation from our, our valve cover. So we're going to go either a big like 12 a.m. port here or like two sixes or two eights and we'll run it to a catch can. Then the catch can, the vent line, will go into the exhaust and uh, we'll use the exhaust to suck the pressure out. Um, when the exhaust pulses go by, they'll um, form a vacuum that sucks the air out. That so, sounds very well thought out. Yeah, thanks, Micah. <laughs> you have to ask. You can't record after I start talking. Okay, Ronnie, what is the next issue? <laughs> <laughs> so, the truck, it, it's done this like three times. This Q&A style is hilarious because I know what the issues are. I mean, in this case, I didn't. but <laughs> But I usually know what the issues are. But I have to ask anyway for benefit of the people watching these videos. So there's actually like a question and an answer. So what's the issue? Um, it's getting hot. Okay. Engines are supposed to get hot. Turbos are supposed to get hot. Yeah, but I mean it starts getting like way hot. Okay. But it's really weird. So it's only when I first start it and I drive immediately. Yeah, I can rip on this thing as hard as I want. It'll stay perfect. But if I start it and just take off, it gets hot. And then I turn on the second fan, cools off, turn off the fan, stays there perfect all the time. So I think the thermostat's getting stuck closed. Weird. Yeah, so we'll probably do a thermostat on it soon. It's a pain in the butt to get to. Is it really? Yeah, it's right here. Dang, way down there. Yeah. So I guess the easiest way is to pull the power steering pump out of the way. Yeah. And then get to it. Oh, I see the neck right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there it is, that is silver on. lump. Oh, another thing. This whole thing looks like a silver lump. <laughs> that. So oh, we had a, we went to a drift event, and we had a coolant line blow up. What was this like? Speaking of drift events, uh, we're going to hit one really soon, probably in the next month or two. So look for that video. It's going to be super cool. We'll probably break stuff and okay. have lots of um, strife and issues. And Why do you say that? Like the, the two vehicles that we're taking are the two that have never had an issue. Yeah, he makes a good point. <laughs> Hey, look at Lucky out there running around like kids did, cats do. 
Anyway, back to the back to the vehicle. Um, what was I even talking about? You know, this camera transitions pretty well between the light and the dark. Like if you look out here, it <laughs> transitions in the uh, the light balance, and I come back in here, boom. Nice. Anyway, whatever. It's hot. Do a thermostat. Oh, um, drift event. Remember when we went event. to that drift event? The truck was in A. We went to a drift event, and it blew a coolant line, this little tiny like bypass line. And uh, anyways, it was a pain in the butt. Well, that that line's swelling again, so it's probably getting ready to burst. Where is said line? It's it's right there. Can you see it down in there? That one. Oh, that one down. Oh yeah. man, that does not look fun to change. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Weird. So anyways, we got to do that. And uh, those are really the only issues. The truck's been super solid. Nice stuff. So what are we doing today? Questions and answers. Well, today we're going to cut out this fender liner right here. Okay. Um, because we went and bought some stuff. What'd you buy? What did you buy? <laughs> um, a full coilover conversion for the truck, front and back. Dang. Um, and four link for the rear, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's got to get made. It's made by, what was his name? B. Bonnie? B. <laughs> what was it? Oh, man, it was something like that. Like, B. Banny Customs B -B 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 something? something like that. I'll find it on Instagram real quick. It's B-E-E-B-A-N-I Customs something. But it's the name of something Pope. It was something yeah, Pope. Justin Pope. Dustin or Justin? Justin. Justin Pope out of we have no idea where he's yeah. from. What are we going to see if we can focus here? It's focusing slowly. B. Banny Customs, Jason Pope. Oh, Jason, Jason, but you said Justin. It's Jason Pope. Yeah, he's got it here. Scroll down. Dude, look at that stuff. That stuff is the business. Focus. That is the business right there. That's good looking. So he makes uh, coilover conversion kits, four link kits. Um, big brake kits, dual caliper kits, all kinds of cool stuff for yeah, hard lots bodies. Of lots of stuff. We didn't order everything. We just ordered front coilover kit and rear four. Does he only make stuff for hard bodies? Um, hard bodies and the 720 that came before it because they're basically the same truck. Oh, so that is, that's the one with the Z24 in it? No, 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 no. That would still be a hard body. So the hard body came the... the First, I don't know what year exactly the hard body came out, but like let's just say 85. So 85 to 91 were Z24 trucks, and then 91 to 97 were KA trucks. Oh, my 90 has a KA. Yours is a 90? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was 90 then, whatever year it was. It was, it was after, because the 240 got the KA first. If you haven't noticed this by now, we fumble around with our facts a lot, <laughs> but we don't care. We're close. <laughs> yeah, this is ballpark. Everything we there say just expects to be ballpark. Yeah, right on. Um, but anyway, something like that. So early hard bodies are the Z24, and then after that, it's the KA. But the hard body's all the same. It's just the motor that's different. But before that, it's like the one with the circle headlights. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, Ronnie. Yeah. Question. Are we going to be able to cut this up without the truck catching on fire? I think so. think so is good enough for me. Should I get the fire extinguisher? So... Got the plasma cutter uh, wired up this week. Got 220 out here. Finally. And it's working flawlessly, right? Yeah, dude. It's great. <laughs> it's great. I'll show you what I did yesterday. What'd you do yesterday? I cut this out. Dang, look at that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I had it on That's the nice lowest looking. setting and I didn't realize it. <laughs> I was like, man, what's wrong with this? But it's like way down. But anyways, um, there's, a, there's a slight issue. Pay attention to the lights. That's supposed to happen, right? <laughs> but that one's perfectly fine. Look at the look at the LED one. Can you see it? Yeah. What? Nice. Nicely, nicely. Safety glasses, eh? Yeah, safety first, always. Right on. I need the light. Is it not is it not stuck this. to the thing? Where'd you put the light? We just had it. Jeez. My goodness, you're wasting so much air time. Trust me, I 
already know I'm ridiculous. I don't know where to put this so I can actually see what's going on. So step one, I don't know if you guys know anything about plasma cutters, but a plasma cutter has to make contact and make like a, a circuit through here. That's how it cuts. So we have to grind away the paint with our wire brush. All right. So that we can get contact all the way <laughs> So, Ronnie got this ridiculously long breaker bar off Amazon. No, dude, it's a ratchet. Oh, it's a ra it is a ratchet. <laughs> it's a oh ratchet. my god, dude! Who needs a two foot ratchet? <laughs> Holy crap! That's nice. Dang, look how long that thing is. Holy crap! Like this is my foot for comparison. <laughs> look at this. Tire's still on the ground. It's still on the ground. Oh, there it is. Dang, dude, so much wheel gap. You should run it like that. <laughs> Alright, so he's got to get this wheel and tire off so we don't burn the tire up when using the plasma cutter. While doing this, we realized that we could have easily um, cut this fender out with a air grinder or something like that. Much easier, much quicker. But we need an excuse to use our new plasma cutter. So we're excited about that, so shut up. Don't add us. Hey, we should throw in our uh, our PlayStation IDs. IDs. Dang, dude. Anybody want to come play PlayStation with us? We, we play Fortnite, we play Apex Legends. What else do we play? I play a uh, farm simulator. <laughs> Ronnie plays Farm Simulator. Well, that's that's a hoot. Man, nothing else to play. <laughs> that's, that's the old go-to. I play Rocket League, and uh, dude, oh, did, what you is... know, did you know Rocket League's a cross-platform, just like Fortnite is? I did know that. Dang. I did know that. I didn't know that until the other day. All right, wish us Dang, we can make a shield out of that. We're gonna weld it back in. Oh, are we? I think. We're gonna <laughs> weld it back in. Dang, look at all that room now. Dang. It'll be easy to weld this thing on. <laughs> look at how much we're rubbing. What do we need all this room for? To weld on that kit. Oh. That's just for access? Yeah. What do you think? So when you need to like weld in new seat brackets, do you cut the floor pans out of your car? No, because that's not hard. <laughs> so when you need to put in a new engine, do you cut the front end off of your car? No, but you, a lot of people unbolt them. When you need to put in a fuel cell, do you cut out your trunk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's super normal. <laughs> That's what most people do. Hello. So now we have a big hole up here. Yeah. Just for that reason. Just to have a hole. Just to have a hole. So we did that so that we can access this and easily cut it off and uh, weld the new coilover mount onto this thing, whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to come up like this. It's going to have an eyelet at the top, kind of like a, a, a shock for the back. So I have an eyelet up top and an eyelet down bottom, and the shock will go through there. But it doesn't fit with the stock control arm, so you have to replace your control arm as well. Like it doesn't fit through that hole? Yeah, it doesn't fit here. It's oh. too big around. Okay. 
Oh. As you can see, I mean, there's not even a whole lot of room for just this shock. So you're getting a custom upper control arm. Yeah, custom upper control arm that's completely adjustable and a coilover mount as well. Okay. Um, and the nice thing about the control arm is it uses the stock ball joint. I need a new one, but I don't care. <laughs> We're just going to use this one. Right so, on. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I can extend my lower control arm. I don't know if there's a place that I can cut it and extend it. Um, I'm sure there is. We have to, we'll have to look. Let's see. It just doesn't look like it, you know, because I don't want to move the sway bar. I guess I could just drill another hole for the sway bar. Huh? Sure. Yeah, so I guess we could do it right there. I don't know. But anyways, I want to extend that just to get the truck a little bit wider, get a little more of that angle, because I also want to do an angle kit. That thing. angle? Yeah, that angle, yo. You know? Yeah. I gotta be a hot boy. <laughs> but, uh, and then I want to get the um, missile work. Um, knuckles. Yeah, that's what they're called. A knuckle. Angle kit yeah. type thing? Exactly. All he right. sends you new um, steel braided brake lines what? that are a little bit longer. And uh, you send him your knuckle, and he sends you a knuckle that's already pre cut and welded back together and everything. Fancy. So, pretty good deal. He's, he's kind of like the, the start of the hard body drifting craze. Um, a lot of people don't know who he is. Like, they go on forums, and they see his truck from way back in the day, and they're like, oh, my gosh, did anybody know this guy? Blah, 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 blah. And, like, now he has his, like, 2J swapped hard body. Nice. It's a monster, and it's, like, crazy wide in the back. And But he, he did everything to it himself. And I think he learned how to weld and everything on his truck, and now he's, like, a professional fabricator. Hey, look at the camera, not me. I'm looking at you, dude. Right Stop. Look eyeball. at the camera. Stop looking at my eyeball. Eyeball. I know you can see this one eyeball right here. <laughs> That's the only one I can see. The other one's blocked by your, your jank finger. <laughs> hey, this is my jank finger. Check this out. I smashed it when we were painting the uh, we were painting the so the F-150. Yeah, and that was months ago, dude. And it's, it's still been like six months. God, it's you know the nail's taking forever to grow out. I think I damaged my nail bed. I need a a manicure, I guess. <laughs> So you're getting rid of your torsion rods too, right? Yeah, torsion bar's gone. Nice. That'll be nice. So that should, hopefully, will stiffen the truck up a little bit and it won't be such a uh, marshmallow. Right on. This is the booty of the hard body. So I don't have a big problem with the rear suspension on the truck. The Why issue, are we looking at the bed? Well, because we're going to talk about four link. Okay. <laughs> While looking at the bed. Yeah. Okay, whatever. But I don't have a big issue. The issue that I have is the ride height in the back. Like, it's too it's too high. So, we're going four link so we can adjust it easy. Four the link! Nice, yeah, the nice thing about this kit is it uses your, your factory leaf spring um, mounts. Okay. Um, so, mine are re-drilled, and they actually work with that, too. So, you can have it re-drilled or the factory hole. Why are yours re-drilled? To get more low. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So this is where the original bolt goes, I think. I can't remember because I cut it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is where it went, and then we uh, re-drilled it and put it back, um, and we cut the, the mount off. But he said that it will still work with that. Um, so that's nice. Your lower links go there, and then it's triangulated, so your top links will go like from the axle. We'll just say this is the axle, and they'll come like this to the frame. Okay. Um, and those will be your top links, so you don't need a pan hard bar or anything like that because you're triangulated. So the two top links are keeping the axle from shifting right, because they're sure. pushing against each other. Do they kind of act like a like a swing arm? Like the axle's kind of on a swing arm? Uh, yeah, that's that's basically what the lower mounts are. Oh, okay. So that's that's how a four link is. You know, you your your suspension isn't attached to anything. Like basically, the truck we could cut everything off behind the axle and get rid of it. Because all the suspension will be in front of the axle. Oh, okay. You know, so there there will be no need for anything behind the axle of the truck. So we could cut the frame off and get a little bit of weight reduction and whatever. But um, yeah. So you have the the lower link, and that's what the axle really pivots on. And then the two the two triangulated links, they're basically just to keep the axle from wrapping. Right. So I don't know if you know what axle wrap is, but it's basically. When I know what gangster wrap is. Is it similar? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> so whenever you like launch your car and it has a solid axle the axle it's it's a circle right but it's like this and so when you launch it the tires make it move it does this number okay actually it goes the other way it goes back so you, so like the front of your differential will tip up yeah okay and so that's why i don't know if you've ever seen on like old muscle cars that have leaf springs they have that bar underneath the leaf spring you know what i'm talking about we can put a picture right here okay 
But Let's put a picture right here. They're, uh, they're traction bars, and so what they do is they smack the bottom of the leaf spring. So the leaf spring's here, and that's attached to the axle, and it smacks the bottom of the leaf spring to keep axle wrap from happening. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, so what's four link going to do for you? Make me be able to lower the truck more. Dang. You want to lower? Yeah, just lower. In the back. Er. Not in the front. The front's good, but in the back, yeah. Okay. It's too tall. Will it make you any stiffer in the rear, or just about I, the same, I, I, or what? I would assume so, but the truck's super stiff in the back. It's not that bad. Um, the front is like a freaking trampoline. Look, we're going to have to stop using the, the adjective super. Super. We use it a lot. I think you've started using it, because I use it like 30 times a video. I say super. Super bouncy. Like a trampoline. Like a super <laughs> trampoline. Well, it sounds super. But the back, <laughs> the back's pretty good. I just want it. I just want it lower. Okay. Not super awesome. low. Not slam. Nothing like that. So just, why not go independent rear, like 240SX or something like that? Well, first off, I would have to find a 240 rear end, like the whole thing. That's a running driving car. I, I I've thought about that, but I just can't. I can't get myself to come to destroying a good like a good running driving car. Especially since that that's going to be my drift car for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny I sold that car back to Ronnie and now I get to drift it <laughs> it's like you know I don't know like drinking the milk without buying the cow is that is that kind of like the uh, yeah. like why buy the cow when you get, you the, get milk the milk for free, for free or yeah. whatever right on yeah so basically uh, I bought a car from Bo for Bo to keep it <laughs> life hack <laughs> Never get your project cars done, and maybe your friends have extras. <laughs> so it's time for us to wrap this video up because we both are fiending to go play Apex Legends. Um, like, if you haven't played it, it's a free game on PlayStation, and we love it. It's on everything. Come play with us. Oh, it's on everything, but it's free, like Fortnite. So, you know, forget all those other games that charge you for downloadable content and crap like that. Just come play with us. Should we drop in our PSNs? Boom, right here. Pew, pew! <laughs> Bowser woke up. He was like, what the crap is that? <laughs> Calm down. Calm down, Bowser. Calm down. Did I hit record? There's so many Subarus here. Dude? dude, there are so many Subarus here. What's up with that? We need to get cracking. God, we need to get crack a lacking. Did they charge you for that? I don't know. I, I don't have know. no idea. Anyway, we like you guys. Keep watching our videos. We'll see you all later. Bye, guys.